what he did. He turned down Rockhalt. He turned down uh, Vitor Belfort. He then called out Yoel. Yeah. So it's like, well, wait a minute. If you call out a tougher guy than the ones you declined, uh, yeah, maybe you do get a little credit here. So now he's not only called out Yoel, he has demanded Yoel to the point that he said, if they don't give me Yoel uh, for the interim title on the real card, I'm done. Yeah, Yeah, I'm going to walk away from the UFC. I don't believe him. I don't think that that is true. But let's see how that all goes. Uh However, he did say one thing that kind of makes it tough if, if you're if you're in the UFC leadership, which is he said it's got to be for the interim belt. It's like, wait, Anderson, are you saying you'll fight Yoel because we want you to do a fight? I, I think we can get you Yoel. I'm just if, if I'm Dana, hey, I think I can make that happen. But what's this interim title? We have a champion, mm-hmm. Michael Bisping, and that champion is not hurt. He is not sick. He's not hiding in the closet somewhere. He's got a fight scheduled against the greatest of all time in George St. Pierre, who's moved into the weight class. This isn't a gimmick fight. Or, or, or a gimmick marketing strategy. This is the world champion versus the greatest to have ever done it, who has now moved into the weight class. So I don't know how you put an interim belt up. I think Anderson's argument, he didn't clarify this, but I think if I, if I understood where he was going, I think his argument is, hey, that belt is held up. You're going to do this St. Pierre fight. Uh, so we need to keep the division going. And I'm scratching my head going, well, and that's not the same thing as, like, say, what Connor's trying to do, where he's trying to uh, fight Floyd and, and hold up the MMA belt. It's not the same thing at all. If George St. Pierre comes into the weight class, George St. Pierre cuts the line. Now, he could go down to 155 and do that. He could come to 170 and do that. He can go to 185, and no reasonable person can argue that. He hadn't lost since the Matt Sarah defeat in, what was that, 2000. 2003. I mean, it was so long ago, I can't even remember the year. Uh, that's a real fight. That's a legitimate fight. And that's the next fight. So I don't know where the... It, I feel like I really respected that he called out Yoel. That he was willing to yeah, fight Yoel in five tough rounds. Fight. Tough fight. Number one contender without a question. I really respected that, but I thought he, he laid down a gauntlet to make sure the fight couldn't happen, which is that it also had to be for the interim title. And you're kind of scratching your head going... No, no, wait a second. It's, there is no need for an interim championship. I can't do, I can't fulfill that clause. There was guys. It, it, do you think it's his way of, I don't want to say skipping the line, but skipping the line to guarantee him if he does get past your Romero that, hey, I am the interim champion. Now you have to give me another fight with Bisping. Yeah. That his, that's his play, right? Yeah, that's the play there. And, and it's a pretty clear one. And I like it and I get it. I just don't know if that could be fulfilled. I can remember guys fighting. It was, it was a long time ago uh, when Pride was still around. And they were willing to fight anybody. Anybody, anytime. You give me a half a million dollars and I'll be there. And I was like, well, wait a second. Wait a second. That's not anyway. You just priced yourself out of the fight. Well, you come up with the money and I'll do it. Well, I'm sure you would. But you just, you made this, this gangster statement of, I'll do it, I'll be there, any, but I don't care who. But then you put a clause in there that isn't reasonable. So isn't that, that's kind of like saying, well, I don't really want to do the fight. I'm not really willing to do the fight. So when Anderson gave this speech, I was a little bit torn because I felt like he had passion, was speaking from the heart, and really wanted the Yoel fight. The other part of me goes, look, there's some gamesmanship here, and he just slipped a clause in. That would be a bad thing if they made that an interim title. It would be yeah. bad. Because the interim belt, and it goes back to boxing, it doesn't go back to, well, I can only say UFC because Bellator has never done an interim belt. So when UFC came along and came with the interim, they had to take their cues from the other combat sport that had been there first, where they got the idea, which was boxing. And even Vince McMahon had done some interim titles, but there was rules to it for Vince McMahon. If you did not defend your belt, and I get that this is a make-believe and fake, I get the whole thing, but he still had rules. If you do not defend your belt for any reason for 12 months, then the division is eligible to have an interim belt, or you could be stripped. In boxing at one time, and feel free to correct me, but at one time it was if you do not defend your belt within 12 months, you were called a closet champion, and you couldn't be stripped. You were eligible to be stripped, and or an interim title could go up. Mm -hmm. What we've seen in MMA is they can bring out an interim title anytime they need to make a poster and they think that it's good for marketing. And so that's taken a little of the validity away, only a little bit, because for the most part, and particularly when it started, it was for good reason and they needed to do it. Now it's become a bit of a marketing tool. But if you were to tell me that this is going to be the interim title while the sitting current champion and Michael Bisping, who has just beaten Anderson Silva, uh, 
has a fight booked, and that's the only reason he can't take that. You can't do an interim title when your champion's healthy and willing to go, and Bisping is healthy and he's willing to go. Yeah. Right? Am I right about no, that? No, absolutely. That's the problem with boxing is per there's the too make, many belts, Per the make-believe rules of interim. Now, with interim, yeah. you can do anything you want, but per the make-believe rules that we agree that we can adjust on the spot, yeah, it's really, it still goes against it, it. It should be used in a situation like uh, a fighter's injured for a long – he's a champion – He's out for a long period of time. He physically can't fight or defend his title, so maybe you give somebody an interim title. So when that guy does become healthy, you've got your number one contender or somebody holding the belt makes it more compelling. But, yeah, it can't turn into boxing, man. If this whole MMA, UFC, Bellator, if any of it, it turns into the boxing landscape of it, it's not good for the sport. It's not good for the fans. There's too many belts. I mean, who's the heavyweight champion of the world right now, right? Maybe maybe Joshua, but there's eight other guys that, you know, are probably from Russia somewhere that are holding belts. Right. Legitimate belts. And then you've got all these other ABC belts that, you know, I get guys I work with all the time that are world champions and belts that I haven't necessarily heard of or, or, or it's it just, it's too much, man. I, you know. It's it. This is what's happened. It be, it used to become so. When somebody asked me a question like, "Was was uh, Mike Tyson the greatest heavyweight champion of the world?" Well, of all time. Well, at one time there was probably three, maybe four belts at that time, somewhere around there that were legitimate. But back when you go back to like a Joe Lewis era, there was one champ, and you had the belt or you didn't. And there was no such thing as interim. I hope, I hope it doesn't turn all these belts and sanctioning bodies if the dynamic of a, a UFC or, or another, you know, starts to adopt some type of different rules where other sanctioning bodies can come in and whatnot. Um, yeah, because, I mean, what is an interim belt? You know what I mean? If, if the guy holding the belt can't defend it because he's hurt, you give two guys an interim belt opportunity, okay, I, I could I could sell that. But if a guy like Bisping is fighting GSP and he is fighting and he is the champion, well – have those two guys fight for the number one contender. They don't need an intern belt. Yeah, I agree with that. Coach, this is the balancing act that gets lost on a lot of people. What is good for the fans and what is good for the fighters? And it's not always the same thing. I completely agree. And one thing we have in MMA that people resent a little bit, but is we don't do co-promotes. You're either with Bellator or you're with the UFC. You're with one FC or you're with right, but you're wherever you are, you're assigned exclusively to that promotion. Now, here's the good news, and this is what gets lost on people, and that that is true. So they can't co-promote them. Michael Chandler can't go in there and and uh, and fight with Connor. That's true, and that's that's too bad. However, the positive sign that I don't feel a uh, positive side of this that I feel doesn't get told, it kind of gets lost in the shuffle, is. Scott Coker, with the guys he has, but he can make any fight he wants. If he had Pacquiao and he had Mayweather, he would have made that fight any time he wanted, and then he would have wanted to make that eight years ago. Mm-hmm. Dana White can and does mm-hmm. make any fight he wants within that roster. Mm-hmm. If he wants two guys against each other, and again, I'll go back to Pacquiao and Mayweather, if he had them both, he would have given us that fight at the time that we wanted that fight, and we would not have to wait. So it actually helps in so many ways to give the fans the best fights at the time that they want. There is a truth. You have to operate with under who's under your roster because co-promotes just isn't a thing yet. But I think over time that could change. I think over time that will change. Uh, there's been no reason for a meaningful period of time for the UFC to do a co-promote. They are number one, and the number two was so far down that it just didn't make sense. That's changing. You're seeing the things that are happening at Bellator. The ratings have come in. They still hold the record. Tito and Ice Fight still has the 2017 record. We're early in 2017, but we deserve a little pat on the back for that. Selling out arenas. The ticket prices are going up. The gates are going up. I mean, it's a reality that in a period of time, particularly with the different channels and networks and the fact that Ari is now involved and understands channels and networks and ratings at a level that... Almost no other human does. Uh, it, it is conceptually reasonable that eventually we'll have a co-promote. But until that time, 
I think we do need to appreciate the upside of what we have now, which is these promoters do have control and can make the fights that they want. They don't have to sit down and negotiate and hash things out until, again, guys and and other promoters just price themselves out of it to where it doesn't make sense to do. They don't have to go in and get a whole bunch of opinions. They can make a decision and move on with their day. And that's the positive side of this. And I don't know that that story gets told. 